Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. Well, it's been a very long time since we last did a video um, and as you if you watched our most recent video you'll know that we were obviously in the throes of moving. Um, well look we've moved and uh, this is the new uh, digs for the for the Trafergi. Um, I'm going to show you around in a minute um, give you a better view but um, I just wanted to do a quick update video really um, we are not ready to start filming yet we're, we're we're probably a couple of months away still from that I'm afraid um, but uh, I have actually found some footage of a video that I did I thought I'd lost it but then I found it on a different memory card so I must have got myself confused um, so actually I'm going to tack on to the end of this video the uh, the footage of me re uh, what do you call it, rebinding the field coils for the alternator, not the alternator, sorry, the dynamo of the Fergie. A um, couple of videos back you will have seen me dismantling the, or testing and dismantling the uh, dynamo and uh, I talked about the fact that the windings would have to be re-wrapped essentially. Um, now look, this isn't something that I would typically recommend as a DIY job. Um, I decided to do it. It's something that I've always been interested in. Something that I wanted to give a, you know, wanted to have a go. Um, so I did it, and I um, and I did film it. So that's really what this video is about. But I, th I figured I'd just do a quick update as well, give you a very quick walk around, um, and show you kind of what we what we're dealing with. So enjoy. Okay, now you're going to have to forgive the camera work. I cannot find my tripod and and anyway we're going to do a bit of a walk around so look this is the new well certainly the current shed where the um where the fergie is parked um i don't think this is going to be its long-term home um i'll show you in a, in a little bit where i think we're going to put it but for now this is where she's parked um as you know she went into storage for a bit um along with most of the equipment in the workshop and uh, it's taken a while to get ourselves sorted. We've had a lot of work to do on the house and getting that sorted. Um, and as, you, as I'll show you in a second, a lot of other things that we're doing as well. Um, but just to get started, we decided to put her in here, which is what we call the top barn. Um, you'll notice that it's a, it's a soil floor, earth floor, uh, which is not, it's not bad, but it's not ideal. Um, and hence, and, and and you'll see that's a recurring theme and, and something that we've got to we're going to have to sort out. But anyway, let let's have a quick walk around. Um, I mean, nothing has changed obviously since um, since we moved. Basically, we've just put her in here, and um, and this is where she sat ever since. Basically, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's a current current position. Um, now we're going to go through here, just off to this side. This is the the end, one of the entrances to the what we what is ultimately going to be the workshop, and one of the reasons why we're not ready to start filming again is essentially because, as you can see, everything is still pretty much just in here without. Um, you know, nothing's been sorted, everything's still packed, all these crates are still full. Um, loads of stuff in there. And I'll, I'll take you around the other side and um, show you kind of how this is set up. So as we come through, you can see now it opens up and we've got a much bigger area here. And um, lots of, lots and lots of space, much more than we had at the previous place. And what's quite nice about this one as well is if you see in here you've got these bays um, and on top you've got lots of storage area now we've not sorted this yet but you can see we've got basically that one and then a second one and again up top and then back where we came from we've got the third one and again space on top so that's um once this is all done and sorted, that's going to be really pretty cool. The issue, one of the issues is, as I say, we're not unpacked properly, we're not ready. Basically, we just brought everything from storage and, and for all intents and purposes, dumped it in here. But also, look here, we've got 
cement floor, earth floor, and in each of those bays, it's earth floor as well. And and actually, as you um, as you you can't see it on the camera, but basically the earth floor rises as it goes back. So that's it's just not level and um, basically not ideal. This used to be it was originally a piggery, and then they converted it for cows, and then uh, probably about 20 years ago it was um, completed um, as in the building was made complete and uh, was converted into a workshop so the main issue is the fact that it's um, you know we just haven't sorted everything out yet but lots of shelving in there lots of space um, which is good I'm not convinced that I'm going to keep these shelves in the center they kind of restrict the access I'm going to I think I'm going to move those out of there and um, rather put them for example along the either along the back wall in here or along the sides uh, you can see here we've got a couple of filing cabinets i might um, make uh, make proper storage well ultimately there will have to be proper storage in here although it's also quite nice as you can see to have a wall to hang stuff on um, so we're going to have to find the right combination of that to access the uh, the storage at the top, unfortunately, you have to use a ladder, and that means moving the ladder along, depending on which one you want to access, and that's not ideal. So we, um, I need to have a think about whether we whether we continue to do that. But yeah, so this will be the new workshop. Um, once this is sorted, you can hopefully you can imagine the Fergie sitting in here, probably just about here, and um, us working on it. Workbenches along here and then all the tools and um, supplies and everything in one or more of these bays so yeah that's um, that's the new accommodations so just as we come out now what's basically the main door this this door opens as well so that gives you basically vehicle access we come out into the courtyard we've got a couple of stables there um, more storage there double garage etc but over here we've got what will be essentially the equipment shed now you may have to excuse the wind it's quite windy today but you can see we've got the international park here at the moment and bits and pieces around this side equipment and whatever this all still needs sorting and uh, we'll get all that sorted out eventually on this side coming around this is currently just storage but eventually uh, may well be where we put um, a, a you know some form of project as well we'll see how we get on with that don't know if you're going to be able to see but over here and no you can't see it but basically behind those trees over there we've got another equipment yard where all the trailers and um, the mower etc is all parked down there um, so yeah that's um, still needs work <laughs> but anyway now this is coming back in we're back in the workshop but coming through into this little alcove or it's an extra room basically um, that was the previous owner they had he had this as his wood workshop now this is the reason why we're we're not ready basically I've had to build this wall and um, and then through here coming through I've had to build essentially a false wall at the back and we've put down a new floor and I've just started doing the fitting uh, this is for um, Kathy's business uh, dog parlor so um, yeah so this had to be done first obviously we've got to get her back up and running you can see these walls are just about well they're now ready for painting um, they've been sanded uh, filled and sanded and then this room will be her office and um, other bits but basically this is adjoined to the to the workshop so if I just spin around sorry it might make you dizzy but go through these double doors and you're back into the workshop 
as as we saw before but look that's the uh, that's the main reason why we've been delayed is um, basically needing to sort out that salon and uh, get get um, get that back up and running we um, obviously it's important to um, to get a business back up um, yeah so look I hope that that's been interesting um, as I said I'll tack on uh, I'll, I'll end this bit here um, say goodbye and then I'll um, publish the, the the footage of me um, re-wrapping re those field coils for the dynamo. Hope you all have a good week and uh, well I'll see you soon as soon as I possibly can. Uh, we'll get we'll get ourselves set up and uh, get back up and running. Keep well everybody see you soon. Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. It's been a while since we did a video. Um, as uh, you probably know if you've watched it, the last couple of videos, you know that we are uh, relocating, we're moving. And of course that involves a huge amount of sorting and packing and uh, moving stuff into storage, etc, etc. So there really hasn't been much time for videos. Um, however, I have kept back a, a couple of small little jobs that, w that we can continue working on in between and, and that's what today's project is. Um, so again, a few videos back, you saw us um, testing and stripping the dynamo or the alt, uh, sorry, the generator on the uh, from the Ferguson. And what we found was that it really just needed a good cleanup and a good service. Um, but when we got to the field coils, we found that they were in quite, or certainly the wrapping, the um, the fabric. Uh, wrapping that goes around the quills was in quite bad shape. In fact, it basically just disintegrated as you as I was trying to uh, clean these. Um, so they need re-wrapping. Um, and I thought, well, first of all, I'd never done this before um, myself. So I um, I watched a couple of YouTube videos and uh, got a good sense of what was needed uh, and how to do it. It meant I had to go and buy some uh, materials that I don't or I, I don't normally have. Uh, which obviously took a little while to source those and to get, get the right kind and do the research, etc, etc. Anyway, we're now ready and at a stage where we can do it. And in fact, I have done one of them, as you can see. Now, this is not quite finished. It's just been wrapped. Um, and today's video, I'm basically going to wrap this one so you can see how I do it and what I've learned. Um, when they've both been wrapped, they then need to go, or well, basically they need to be varnished. So there's a special varnish that you need to put on, um, which basically makes this, it makes this fabric, um, well, basically more permanent, it protects it, um, and also it gives it a certain amount of sort of heat protection, and also, but you have to use a particular varnish because it needs to be essentially non-conductive. Um, so yeah, in this video, I'll talk you through and we'll, I'll run you through the process for wrapping the coil and hopefully we'll get to do the varnishing as well. We'll see how we get on. Hope that you enjoy it and hope that this is informative for some of you. Okay, so yeah, this is what we're looking for. This is what we're trying to achieve. Um, and of course, this is what we're starting with. I'll put that to one side so we don't need that and we don't want to get that we don't want that to be in our way. Now the first thing you need to do is buy or what I had to do was to buy this um, cotton tape. Um, from research it's basically it's Egyptian cotton um, and it's basically specially made for wrapping field windings. The particular one that I'm using has a red line in the middle which basically shows you the midway mark or the half between you know across the width and that helps when you're wrapping so you know that you're doing half a wrap at a time. Um, this particular one is 13 millimeters wide um, from what I could tell you get a 13 millimeter 16 millimeter and then of course it gets they get bigger from there um, but when I uh, took the old uh, fabric off of these, I sort of I measured it and it was roughly 13. It was difficult to measure because, like I say, it was kind of disintegrating. disintegrating. So I knew that, th well, I, I chose 13, that that seemed to be the right, um, 
width. I thought 16 was going to be too wide, especially when you come to do the corners. Now, you can't, obviously you can't fit that roll through the coil, so unfortunately you have to measure off a, a certain amount, a length, and then uh, you use that to do the wrapping, which is unfortunate, but anyway, that's the way it is. So again, I'll put that off to one side, we don't need that. So I've measured off here roughly four and a half meters of this of this tape, um, or cloth if you want to call it that. Um, I arrived at that number, that length, by doing some very crude maths. Um, and it's it all approximate, basically. Unfortunately, this stuff coils terribly, so it is difficult to work with. But anyway, um, what I did is, first of all, I measured the, the distance, obviously the length across here. Hopefully you can see this. And here, and, and then doubled it. So I get the basically the circumference of the coil. And then, so I know that I need a certain number, so that gives me the length of one wrap, if you want to think of it that way. And then to calculate how many of those do I need, I measured basically the you know the length, the length, the width, the width, again added those all together, that gives me the, let's call it the distance that I need to travel. But I have to double that because each wrap is only going to cover half the distance, half the width of the 13 millimeters of the tape. And basically, from that, you can determine, and mine worked out to, I think it was 4.2 or, yeah, 4.26 meters is what I would need to, um, to wrap this coil. I've obviously allowed for a little bit of overage, um, and I've cut it at just over 4.5 meters. Um, so I have a 4.5 meter length here, which is, as you can see, in a terrible, messy bundle, but we'll, we'll sort that out in a second. But you notice this already has some tape on here. This is an adhesive tape, right? So, you know, a bit like sellotape, I suppose, or perhaps masking tape is the closest equivalent. Uh, but what I found, this is this 3M product, which is um, it's a glass cloth electric tape. Um, and I figured that was probably what I needed. Looking at the specifications of it, again, it has a certain amount of electrical resistance, so it will, it, will, you know, it is suitable for electrical applications, um, and also temperature. I can't remember exactly, but I think it goes up to something like 300 degrees C, which is a you know, heck of a lot more than what we're going to need. So that's what I'm going to use, just to basically cover those. And all those are doing, obviously, is keeping your, your coil, your bundle of conductors together whilst you're wrapping it. It's not absolutely vital and if I didn't, if I hadn't found this I would have basically just rewrapped this without it. But I figured as I found it and as we're here we might as well do it. So first thing I want to do is to cut off a reasonable length of this stuff. And I'm just going to stick it over this, these existing um, tapes, rather than take them off and run the risk of them, the bundle coming loose. Now you want to pull this reasonably tight <clears throat> as you're sticking it, so that it it helps it to to adhere. Basically, it improves the the adhesive effect. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's one. I'll quickly do the others. Oh, I probably shouldn't drop the stuff on the floor, but anyway. There we go. Pulling it reasonably tight. It doesn't stretch like insulation tape does, but as you pull it, you can feel it adhering just that little bit better. It's a bit like, it smells a bit like Elastoplast used to smell. I don't know if you noticed Elastoplast doesn't have that smell anymore. Um, but this smells like the Elastoplast used to. So it's obviously a similar or same adhesive they're using.
Here we go. Now, when we come to this one, and there you can see that one's actually come loose already. Um, so I'm going to take that off. But you notice that it you've got these two conductors that need to essentially stick out. Um, so you do have to be careful. You've got to get the tape underneath this one and over that one and try not to change the shape of it too much. So <coughs> let me um, get a piece of tape first. I'm going to make this one a little bit longer because we may go around at least twice on this one. So like I said, we want to be under this one. You'll notice that this one already has a, has a insulation on the wire. So we want to get underneath that. But that one, it needs to go over. So we'll hold that down and tape that up. And there we go. So, right, so now we've got that on. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so now we've got that on. We'll put that away. Okay, now we can start with our wrapping. Now, what we do is um, we want to we don't want to start anywhere near these conductors because obviously that's where some complication comes in. Also, the corners are quite complicated. So, what I what I'm doing is I'm starting halfway down the long side, so pretty much around here. But we also need to be careful not to make this too thick, right? So, with the combination of this tape plus this tape, you don't want it to be too thick. And your first wrapping is going to be essentially double width. So, what I, rather than put it on top of that tape, because that will make it quite, it'll make a quite a big lump there. I'm going to start back here. Where am I? No, sorry. I'm going to start back here, so that it starts there. We're going to go all the way around, and we're going to finish back up here. We don't really want to finish on a corner, so we might put it sort of in the middle like that okay now to do this you need some um, super glue and what you do is put a little bit on the quill here where you want to start spread it around you basically make a make a bubble or a lump there. And you bring your tape in, and obviously you don't want to be careful not to get this glue on your fingers. So you go just just past it, and you notice it immediately it's it sort of soaks into the tape, which is what you want. And what we'll do now is we'll bring this tape through. Okay, we're about ready to start. So now, what you want to do is hold that really tight and bring your first wrap. If I can stop it from coiling. Sorry, this is a bit fiddly to start with. There we go. You get it over that glue again, and again, if there's any excess glue, it'll soak in. 
but now you are basically ready to start wrapping. So what we do is we pull the excess through and we wrap. Now as you're wrapping what you want to do is put the edge of the the side of the, the, the new wrap that you're doing line it up with that red line so that you're basically running halfway or you, you're doing a half, a half a width coverage each time and obviously at the start here it's quite tedious because you have to pull all the excess through all the time but once you get going it um, obviously gets shorter and it, you, you, it starts going a bit quicker as well the biggest issue with this tape is, is the fact that it wants to curl all the time and that can be painful but eventually I get it. Now I'm pulling quite tight as I'm going around and holding it, clamping it whilst I'm pulling it through. You don't want it to be loose because um, it will basically just disintegrate if you do is what I've learnt especially once you put the varnish in or, or put the varnish on so you want it to be quite, it needs to be nice and tight. Now as we approach the corner here, it starts to get a bit more challenging because obviously you've got further to go on the outside than on the inside. So inevitably what you land up doing is basically overlapping on the inside. The trick is to always on the outside keep it on the red line, essentially keep the edge on the red line. So what I'm going to start doing, I'm, I'm beginning to approach the corner here. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to pull this back so it covers the red line at the bottom on the inside of the coil here and then is on the red line at the outside like that okay and we'll do that each time and what that'll do is basically help you to start turning the corner and eventually you have to just overlap quite a bit, almost double the, uh, the width of the tape on the inside, but the outside is always half width, if you see what I mean. So just like that. You can see already there how I've overlapped and then at the, at the, as I get to the outside of the coil, I'm going to the halfway mark and that's starting to turn the corner essentially. Now if you pull the tape too tight it will you'll notice it obviously gets thinner as you're pulling it the width reduces so you you'll get a feel for how tight to pull it. If you pull it too tight then obviously you make, you, if, the, if the width is too narrow, much too narrow, noticeably too narrow, then of course you're pulling too tight. So but you'll get a feel for it as you go. It's actually not difficult. Um, you want it to be nice and firm but at the same time not um, terribly um, you, know, you don't want to overdo it basically. Now as we approach in this corner we also have to need to start thinking about this wire. This wire needs to be covered. Let me get you a better shot of that. So you can see that wire is now loose. Our adhesive tape went underneath it. Our cloth tape is going to go over it. So we have to start factoring that in as we're now approaching it here in the in the bottom in the inside corner. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, 
So now on this one, as I come over, it's going to start covering that wire. Do you see? So I want to position that wire exactly how I want it as I bring that one round. I haven't got enough hands here. Okay, fingers will do. There we go. And I've just nipped the corner of it there, which is hopefully going to hold it in place. We'll see. Otherwise, we'll, this next one definitely will. Okay. Now we're also approaching this this little wire and we need to go you can see how it was bent there so obviously it was wrapped up to there but of course it's not there right the other thing i notice is some of the insulation is coming off there so what i might do is put some of this tape just underneath and then go over so that there's a little bit more protection around that wire as we come out of this corner So to do that, I just loop it underneath and then tighten it, just like that. Okay, so now we can start straightening up. We've come we've around, we're starting to come out of the corner and we can start straightening our tape up again. Just like that. Now, you can see how this insulation is quite flat here, so you mean flattened. So obviously that was inside the tape before, but here it's basically round. So what we're going to do is we're going to tape it up to that point, <clears throat> and then we're going to go under the wire, so that this wire is essentially exposed, sufficiently exposed for it to be to go to where it needs to go in the, uh, in the dynamo body. So we'll keep going over the top for now. that. Now obviously this is a monotonous and boring task. Um, I will probably time lapse from here. You can see, you've, hopefully you've got a good impression of how we do this. You can see how it's starting to form here. Lovely binding essentially and um, it will... I'll just keep going basically. If I um, notice anything special I'll I'll come back, but for now I'll probably just time lapse. Okay, now 
we're just about coming to the end here. You can see this is where we started. This is, you know, this is where we are now. We're going to we're going to finish off now. You want to finish off on top of the um, the first loop that you made. Um, so when I get there, what I'm going to do again, I'm going to wet that with um, some of that glue, uh, super glue, um, and then wrap over it, and that will basically seal it. Now remember, we're going to varnish all of this anyway, which of course will will keep it all in place and will stop it from unraveling anyway. But until we get there, we want it to, you know, we want to make sure that it doesn't unravel. So we'll. Uh, We'll use some of this glue to um, keep it in place and stop it from unraveling. But you can see it's relatively straightforward. Um, obviously, it's a little bit tedious, but you know it's um, not that difficult to do. You do get cramp in your hand as you're holding it the whole time, but <laughs> other than that, it's um, relatively easy. So good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wet the first half, so this half of the um, the first coil, and then I'm going to put a little bit on the actual windings back there as well, just to um, to help that to seal, uh, not to seal, to stick and stay put as we're wrapping it. Okay. One thing you have to be careful of is that that glue does stick immediately, so you have to get it right as you're coming over for that last um, winding. I think I'm going to do one more. The other thing, um, I don't know if this is right, but from what I've seen and just thinking about it, you want to start and finish on the inside of the coil. And the reason for that is, you think about the, um, the shoe that goes in there, obviously that clamps, that goes in there and it clamps down. So that's going to hold your ends in as well, right? So that's going to stop your ends from being frayed. If the end was on the outside, I mean, to be fair, it's going to be up against the body of the, the inside body of the dynamo, so it's probably going to be fine. But that's uh, you know that's just kind of what I thought, um, and so I've done my start and my finish on the inside face of the coil. Now I've just noticed this hasn't soaked through quite all, all the way through here, so I'm just going to put a little bit more on there just to seal that or to finish it off properly. <coughs> just give that a minute to dry. And there we go, you see that is now stuck, which is what we want. Fantastic. So now what we want to do is pull this back and cut it off as close as you can so you don't have a too much of a loose end there. And then what I will do is um, just wet that end as well. There we go. And there you go. That's the, um, the wrapping done. So the next step, as I said, is obviously now to varnish these. Um, I'm going to get set up for that and then I'll come back. Okay. So I've got this varnish. Uh, again, I ordered it online. Um, you just need to Google um, varnish for field coils uh, or electrical applications. This particular product is, um, I think the brand is Ultimag. There's not a lot of detail on the tin, as you can see. The, the, um, the brand is Ultimag, U-L-T-I-M-E-G. 
and then it's 2000 slash 372. Uh, again, reading the um, the specifications on it, um, I think it uh, insulates up to some incredible voltage. Um, can't remember exactly now. I, what I'll do, I'll uh, I'll find all the specs and I'll put them in the description on the video for you if you want. Um, and again, certain a couple of hundred degrees Celsius on temperature. So uh, you know more more than what we need uh, for this application. Now, hopefully, I can open it. There we go. Um, but it is a, this product is specifically for these um, hmm, uh, for field coils. So we've got this uh, leak-proof or anti-leaking kind of cap in here. We'll see if we can get that out without damaging it, because it'd be nice to. Put it back when we've finished. There we go. Now, no doubt there's a cleaner for this particular product, uh, or a thinner, or something like that, which you would use to clean your. Um, tools with afterwards. I've not bothered with that. Um, I'm just using a real cheap uh, brush and um, obviously just throw a bit in a container and I will um, just bin the container when I'm finished. And what you want to do is make sure you get the varnish out of the threads. You don't want it on the threads there otherwise your cap will seal fast and you won't be able to get into it again. The, I suppose the uh, slightly annoying thing about this project is that I've had to buy these products now um, and <laughs> the likelihood of me using them again is obviously quite slim. Not like I you know, do this kind of job every day. But I was really interested to do it. Um, it's, you know, obviously you can go and buy a new uh, Dynamo for this tractor uh, off of uh, you know the Anglo website, um, probably others as well, and of course I could have just done that. But I've always been mildly interested in this task of basically wrapping quills. I mean, winding quills would be another thing that I would love to do one day. Um, but that's another whole ball game in itself because you need all the equipment to do that, which obviously I don't have and it certainly doesn't make sense to invest in. Luckily these quills were fine, you remember that we tested them and um, they were both testing equal in terms of their resistance um, and of course because you can measure the resistance that means you have continuity as well so I am um, happy that um, Yes, yeah, so I'm happy with just needing to, to rewrap them. Uh, now, I'm just pausing because I noticed this first one that I did, um, I didn't wrap this wire all the way in. I um, And now I'm wondering whether I should have wrapped that one all the way in. What I might need to do is uh, just quickly test fit these in the dynamo. Uh, to make sure that I've got enough slack on this one and or that I've not got too much slack on this one in which case I may have to do one or both of them so let me check that and come back okay <clears throat> I've checked it and that is absolutely correct so this one you see that's the um, essentially the field terminal the field coil terminal that sticks up through the uh, the back of the generator, uh, sorry, dynamo, and then this one actually obviously rivets onto the, um, the body of the, of the dynamo, um, but actually those, those two are quite close, those two points are quite close to each other, so this one actually has to go round and to a, a point over here, so that's why this one is sticking out longer. 
that one is right next to it's the place where it needs to get uh, uh, riveted on so and then these two just get joined together and you've got a an insulator for for those so so that is absolutely correct and you might want to think about that if you ever decide to do this job if you're crazy like me um, the one that rivets to the body of the dynamo has a long um, lead shall we call it and the one that has the field coil terminal is, uh, is is shorter and it is inside the wrapping so anyways you'll notice that I've put a, 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 a zip tie on each of these the idea is whilst I'm also going to varnish them um, and then what I'm going to do is hang them up just to dry um, so that they don't get stuck to anything um, now in terms of um, uh, holding this you want to avoid obviously I'm going to hang them from these leads right so from these uh, wires that's fine but you don't want to handle this too much because you don't want that lead to break right so you don't want to be holding it by that whilst for example you're varnishing because then you run the risk of uh, that getting that wire getting weakened and snapping off so um, anyway let's um, let's make a start so I'm going to hold it just like that and then when I get right to the end here where my fingers are then obviously I'll grab it by the wire just to minimize the amount of time that I'm holding it by the wire and I think what I'm going to do is get some um, paper towel to put down because this is no doubt going to be messy okay and basically all you want to do is dab this varnish on um, in theory the cotton should soak it up um, so to so a certain amount you can see immediately how it's going wet um, but you want to make sure that you get it into every single inch uh, or millimeter almost of the um, of the quill you don't want any holes at all um, any missed spots you've got to get it in everywhere and soak it it's got to soak into that cotton ideally and um, you don't want to skimp as in you almost can't put too much on if you see what I mean if it, that that doesn't soak in will actually drip off and that's why you hang it up to dry um, so that it can soak uh, so that it can drip off I mean um, one video that I watched they actually just dipped these into um, varnish and let them soak for about five minutes and then pulled them out but I don't have that amount of varnish well I do but I don't want to waste it necessarily and I don't have um, a big enough tub right now okay so we're getting to the end of this one. I think we've managed to get into every little corner, just about. Okay. So now I will grab it by the wire and just very gently do this top bit. And there we go. I think that one is just about done. Okay. <clears throat> Now, I probably should have put something down where these are going to drip into. There we go, that'll do. <coughs> just let 
most of the drip off into the bowl. Okay. Right, we're going to hang that one up now. There we go, and we'll do the next one. And that's all there is to it, really. Um, <clears throat> you let that dry. I'm going to leave these to dry essentially overnight. And um, once they are dry, they are ready to be reinstalled. Um, I did check to see whether it makes sense to put a second coat of varnish on, and, and um, the, the general consensus is not necessary. In fact, it would be wasteful because the second coat will basically just sit on top of the, the first coat and uh, all, all that would do is add thickness it won't really necessarily add any additional protection if you see what I mean um, so it looks like everybody uh, just does the one coat um, it, you've got to be careful about adding too much thickness because obviously this needs to go inside the dynamo it's got to fit and um, it needs the shoes the, the pole shoes they need to sorry field coil shoes they need to hold it they need to go in the center and uh, you don't want those getting or being too tight to go in um, and of course remember you've got a armature running in the middle here uh, stator winding which um, not that it would but you know there's, there are there are clearances that need to be considered inside the dynamo Okay, let's get this now. Now there we go, that's the second one done. I'll just let that drip a little bit. And that's it. Yeah, still dripping, come on. Okay, that will have to do. Okay, well that's basically it. Um, I hope that was entertaining and interesting to some of you. Again, I'm not sure that um, it makes a whole bunch of sense for, oh, let me adjust the camera, hang on. Okay, well, as I was saying, there you go. Um, yeah, I don't know that that's necessarily something that everybody would want to do. Um, you know, just the cost, I think, of purchasing the materials that I had to purchase and, of course, the time that I had to put into this. Is, I can see why it's um, why most people would just buy a replacement Dynamo uh, for, for the Ferguson. But, like I say, it was a, it's an interest of mine. It's something that I want to, have wanted to do. And... Um, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm restoring this tractor, not uh, not just replacing parts, if you see what I mean. So, um, yeah, I found it interesting. I've enjoyed it. And again, I hope that you guys got something out of it as well. Um, on the next video, we'll basically be reassembling the Dynamo, which uh, is going to be interesting because it's quite a while since I 
dismantled it, so I hope that I remember how it all goes back together again. Um, I might need to watch that disassembly video myself before before I attempt it, but um, I, of course it'll be interesting, we'll, we'll kind of work on it together, we'll learn together, and we'll get essentially get the job done. Uh, yeah, hope you all have a great week everybody, uh, see you on the next video, and cheers for now.